the, the, or edged at least the, the second period and will look to secure a, 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 a victory tonight to make it a three-point weekend. Floyd Gibson eases Thomas Malasinski into his own bench, nothing doing there. And we've got number eight, Darius Buskowski, rounding behind the goal. Back out to Scott Robson. Oh, no! Padalek with the rebound from Jordan Headley. Look from here, I have to say to you, it looked like a gaping goal there. I have to say that was going to be a, 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 a more obvious opportunity. Lee? Yeah, I give Headley a lot of credit there for getting his leg pad out to make that save on Alice Padalek. Again, the rebound just there with a yawning net, but really a stellar save by the goaltender as much as it was a good play there. 40 seconds of the third period gone. We're looking at 2-1 uh, to, to the Phantoms. Face off in the uh, offensive, offen uh, Phantoms offensive zone. Get my words out. Bobby, so close there for the Phantoms. Yep. Oh, here we've got a breakaway. Is a br oh, Scott Robson just done enough to get back. Uh, yeah. Great work from Scott Robson, Shepping Aaron now, but really he was there one on one with the Phantoms defenseman. Yanis Olsen's moving the nets. Phantoms clear. Yeah, they did. They... Uh, it was a good shot from the point by uh, Scott Robson. Made a good save on it, but the rebound just popped out. And uh, I thought, oh, it was uh, Padalek. I thought Padalek should have put it in. I think he was surprised the puck actually came to him, to be fair on him. Been one or two rebounds that uh, Headley's given up during the course of the game, as would be the case for any netminder in, in, in a game at this level, I, I'm sure. But uh, the Phantoms will be disappointed that they haven't doubled their advantage. 18.53 on the clock, 2-1 to one to the Peterborough Phantoms. Referee's arm in the air, waiting to do the... Uh, do the, uh, the to take the face off. While well, we've got a break in play, uh, we've got some latest scores for you. Obviously, two to one here. Uh, Guildford Flames four, Milton Keynes Lightning zero. End of the second. Telford Tigers two, Bratnell Bees one. Uh, Red hockey matchup and Match Phoenix two, Basingstoke Bison two in the second period. So back to play here in Peter and Mark Levers. Almost gains offensive zone. Advantage for the Peterborough Phantoms, but Yanis Osin's now controlling the puck behind his own goal. A little bit of pressure on the Phantoms here. Swindon wanting to capitalise on some, some momentum that they're trying to build. And number 71 there, Corey McEwen does well again. A couple of assists in the first game in Swindon between these two sides. And uh, impressed hugely. Phantoms break, Baronick, let's see him skate, nice pass. James Ferraro pokes and wins. Back on the boards behind Headley's goal. Baronick and Ferrara. Out he comes. Swindon oh, get a stick in there. Force it away. Phantoms with Wallace there. Struggling to, to, to get it away. Nice shoulder to shoulder charge there from uh, James Ferrara. And Phantoms bring the puck away. Alice Padalek. Oh! My, my car. So here we go, Sam Bullas into Ozins. Rebound, uses sticks to get it away, makes a difference, getting a few extra feet. Lloyd Gibson plays it forward off. Headley's pads, great work from Gibson, that's what we want to see. Wrap round, tremendous work from the former Sheffield Steel. Like that's why we've brought him to the Peterborough Phantoms. Headley covers up, freezes the puck. 17.15 on the clock, 2-1 to one to the Peterborough Phantoms. Interesting start, Bobby. It's been a good start, very good start. And as you were saying about uh, Gibson there, he's impressed me the way he's played tonight. He's got that, plays with a wee bit of an edge and he finishes his checks all the time. Even there, he just threw a speculative puck on the net and beat the defenceman to it. So, you've got to give him a lot of credit to him. Absolutely, a lot of credit for Lloyd Gibson. Uh, I know he's very happy to be here in Peterborough, joining his uh, uh, former Seal Dog teammate. Shot from uh, the blue line from uh, from Scott Robson, glove save from Jordan Headley, spectacular save, one that he's going to make all day long, and we get a break in play. Two to one to Peter Phantom, 17-11 on the clock. I'm sure you've got the clock on screen there that you can see that. Back out to point, Robson shoots again, keeps it low, pad saved. That's fine. Well done. And Eddie Beveris working hard here. 
back out to point. Passed in to the offensive area behind the goal, behind the second red line. Swindon Marquette goes down. Will Weldon, glove side, not a convincing. It's juggling around all over the place. Not convincing there at all. Long pass to Malasinski, but a combination of Craig Scott, great skill from Craig Scott, just there, took a breath. Eddie Beveridge all on his own, Levers heading towards net, veteran Levers, former of, formerly of the Belfast Giants and Nottingham Panthers, no uh, stranger to winning honours as of course the Phantoms did winning the EPL Championship, Playoff Championship last year. 16, 15 on the clock, two to one to the Phantoms. Scrappy, gritty, not so easy on the eye, and we get the puck delivered down the ice for the Phantoms to hopefully clear their neutral zone, which they do from Rob Ferrara. Phantoms not knowing where it is. Banalik, Varonik uh, having a cuddle there with Lydiard. Number 17. Oh dear me. So. We've got 15.42, bit of a, a coming together there. That, now that was 64 for the Swindon Wildcats. Selby with a big uh, hit, and now there's the Cats break. Dear me, oh dear me. So, I'm, I have to say to you, that pass there to Aaron Nell on the back post, really it would have been easier to score for a man of Nell's capability. Bobby, net was gaping, well, and he's the other side of the goal. Yep, net was gaping. I think he was just wanting to make sure he was putting it in the near side instead of just putting it, he could have threw it in the middle of the net that much time. If you put the puck on the net, things are going to happen, and I'm afraid Nell will be very disappointed that he hasn't tied the game up with five minutes gone, 15 minutes to go. Phantom still leads by the slightest of margins. Big pass to uh, Griffiths on the blue line, 13, Sam Bullas, and the Phantoms regain possession, looking to clear it, looking to relieve some pressure on Ozins. he hasn't had an awful lot to do in the third period, in the first six minutes, and there is this going to need to be a time where Swindon are going to need to throw a little bit more caution to the wind, perhaps a little bit early for that just at the moment, 14.27 on the clock, Phantoms in possession. Oh, Scott Robson nearly losing, needs to play it out. And uh, the puck is turned over. Eddie Beveris, seen quite a lot of ice time for, for, that, for that line with Scott and Beveris and Will Weldon, giving the, uh, the top line a break. Good play from backhanded pass from Whitfield all the way down to Ozins, who plays with great accuracy. Oh, dear me. That's almost tape to tape. Not quite, Beveris. Oh, first timer from Will Weldon. Pad save from Jordan Headley. A couple of moments of Swindon pressure. Back now at the other end. Phantoms doing well. No, no, might think I'm being funny here, but Allison's actually one of the more proficient passers on the team right now. The way he moves that puck. Wouldn't be the first time that we've seen a pass from Ozins from goal to a forward on the blue line and almost, almost to Eddie Beveris. Great friends, those two, Osins and Beveris. And uh, I guess Eddie will be slightly disappointed. But, oh, oh dear me. So great chance there for, uh, for Will Weldon. Swindon not able to clear. Milan Baronic punches the puck all the way down to Jordan Headley's pads. 13 minutes remaining, seven minutes gone. We've got Tom Norton out there. Uh, accomplished D-man, and the puck back to Ozzy Stick, played again, this time to Milan Baronic. Ferrara crosses the line, not offside, and we get the Swindon Wildcats coming back. Now, more end-to-end. -end. Ryanen had done well there. Baronic crosses the line, takes the puck. Oh, first time shot, oh, taken by the, uh, the defenceman. I think that was Lydiard. Break. Great pad save, oh! Rebound con control again. Much harder than the, uh, the, the chance. Uh, I'm afraid the Phantoms are now struggling to clear their zone and the pressure is building on Ozzin's goal. Not an awful lot for him to do, but the chances, the looks are being created. Swindon now stepping up a gear, needing to make sure they get an equaliser in the remaining 12 minutes. Out to Padalek. Chips it, takes his own pass behind the goal. 
Phantoms really need to have a little bit of possession, need to build the pressure of their own. Phantom, I think that's Lloyd Gibson, goes to ice. He's being uh, pushed and shoved by Neil Lidiard. Great work from Padalek. Oh, yes! I think that goal was Alex Padalek. Weldon does well behind the goal. Off to Padalek, who spins back and digs into the goal for a two-goal lead. Great strike from Alex Padalek. 3-1 Peter Phantom. Bobby, beautiful goal there. He just picked the puck up behind the net, comes right out to the front. Nice little rush shot at the bottom corner. Stayed on, kept it on the ice. You don't need to always go in the top corner. So big net, so he picked it well. Lee, uh, Alice Padlick put a clinic on there about how to walk the puck out from behind the net into the danger zone, the house, right in front of Headley and putting it right on the ice of the net. It's a simple play, but very effective. Three to one. 11.45 on the clock. Two goal advantage to Peterborough Phantoms. Goal at a crucial time. Two goal leads are, uh, are, are uh, the people talk about the hardest lead in hockey. I have to say to you, uh, it's a better lead than one. And that comes after a period of considerable Phantoms pressure. Big check there by the Swindon player, 11 Griffiths, chasing back now. And we get Eddie Bebris. Oh, Bebris right across the face of the goal to Craig Scott. Craig Scott doesn't make contact. Pressure. Net off the mooring again. That was after a build up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unnecessarily so. I did talk to Bobby earlier on. How many times are we going to see the net come off the morning without a call being made? Yeah, you know, it, it just seems to be a theme in this arena that the net pops off its moorings. There's so many reasons it could be the ice. You can't really blame the goaltender. When he pushes off, he has to try and make the save. It's, it is absolutely the most frustrating part of the game, though, when a man walks in front, puts the puck in the net. So you heard it there first. Leolais doesn't blame the goaltender. <laughs> Sorry, I disagree yeah, with him. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching a guy who's just been beat there and kicking it off. Are you trying to say that I'm too nice? Is that what you're trying to say? 10 uh, 54 on the clock. Phantoms lead 3 to 1 in this English Premier League game. Norton to point, shot, save. Great shot from the blue line into pads. And uh, that was not a hand pass. Okay. So Tom Norton doing his best basketball impression there. His vertical leap isn't quite that high of a basketball player, but he puts it down. You can feel that the scale is tipped in the favor of Peterborough, but in a hockey game like this, the emotional scale can tip right back the other way. Swinton needs to find a way to get something going here, and Peterborough needs to keep the pressure on. Swindon win the fails, the face off. 10.30 remaining, halfway through the final period. McGiffin and Gibson, one, two, back to Gibson. Interesting to look down and see Pluskowskis prowling on the blue line, now having to come back further into the neutral zone. McEwen and McGiffin, road race, Padalek and 64 for the Wildcats, Selby. Swindon clear their lines, don't clear their lines, give the puck away, careless, cross ice pass, should be clear in their zone, oh, and fans again, Kliskowskis, no one to play for, well, good play, sensible, mature play from Darius Kliskowskis, not seen so much from him offensively, but wise head there, bringing the puck out of the offensive zone, even though we've got a player in there, there was nothing to pass to when we wind the clock down, another few seconds. Bebris into the plexi, Phantoms win it, send it down to the boards, Headley controls with his stick, Swindon need to step something, uh, Lee, what does Swindon need to do now? Well, again, Swindon spreading the ice out clearly here, you can see that they have two or three players inside the neutral zone when they pick up the puck, it's a little bit of a risk, but I understand why they're making the move, but they got to make their passes clean, get into the phantom zone and establish a forecheck that's going to create scoring chances, if they can't do that, the phantoms are going to control the rest of this game. Nine minutes remaining, over halfway through the third period. Milan Baranek wins in the wins the puck in the. Oh yes! Milan Baranek with his second goal of the evening wins the puck on the centre spot. 
skates into the offensive zone and fires a tracer past Jordan Headley over his club. That's 4 1 to the Peterborough Phantom. Oh, the lovely goal there by Barney. Uh, and we do get goalkeeper was sitting back in his name. He just went a nice wrist shot going. It was lovely. As Lee said earlier on in the commentary, Milan's been looking for a goal the last couple of games. We'll be delighted with that. Two absolute pearlers this evening to give the Phantoms a three goal margin with nine minutes of the game remaining. Three goal lead. Lee, what a goal. Yeah, that was a sniper shot by Milan Barak. He's clearly coming to life here. About seven games into the season, eight games into the season, Milan has struggled for the first half since the first game. Really coming through tonight with two goals. Phantoms now in dominant control of the game with a four to one lead with 8.30 left. Huge for the Phantoms. Again, right back to you, Phil, for the call. 8.24 remaining, and Bullas and Griffiths, by the way. Oh, what a goal! Padalek, great work to Pliskowski, number five for the Peter of Phantoms. What a goal, Bobby. Again, as we tick tack go play there. Uh, Padalek. He did a lovely uh, pass to Pluskousis, and Pluskousis just buried it. He went off the wing and just buried it on his forehand. I know that the uh, Phantoms camp were disappointed to come out of Milton Keynes last night with just one point after taking the lead three times. They haven't let any lead slip tonight. 5-1, a real message to the rest of the EPL. What a performance in this period. Yeah, Phil, we talked a couple minutes ago about the scales tipping. And in just the course of but three minutes, Phantom scored two goals. It's a tremendous boost to the team. Now you gotta go into, a, not a defensive mode, but a smart mode with the way you're playing. Don't make plays that you have to force and be smart. All the pressure's on, well, excuse me, all the pressure is on Sweden right now, you gotta keep it there. Uh, I think those of you watching on TV will recognize that signal from the referee. Misconduct. So, misconduct, um, and I'm struggling to see. Is it 64? Number 64, that's going to be Matt Selby. Doesn't agree with the call. It looks like Selby's got game. Uh, he doesn't agree with it, I don't think. Don't know what happened there. Selby didn't like the call. Yeah, Selby had that 10 minute misconduct earlier in the game, and you can see the wheels are kind of falling up the truck here for Swindon a little bit, Phil. Swindon again has had a hot and cold start to the season. And the way they're behaving right now, you can see they've kind of lost the grip on this game, but it shouldn't take away from the effort that they put forth the first two and a half periods. They really played good hockey. The fan was just more dominant. So, Phil, real quick here, we have uh, 8.03 left in the third period. Quick score update. The Bees have tightened the score up, and the Tigers have scored a 2-2. Two two. Tigers having a really tough start to the season. And in, uh, in Manchester, Phoenix and the Bison have traded goals, 3-3 three three score. As you know, the Flames still up on the Lightning, 4 to nothing in the second, and the fans now leave 5-1 to one in the third period. Sorry, 7.50 remaining of the game. Phantoms lead 5-1. to one. It's going to be the uh, high-scoring performance. I, I think it's going to be one of the high-scoring performances of the season so far as it's done for the Phantoms. Oh, Phantoms have broken the blue line, caught on the linesman's uh, trousers there. 7.30 remaining. So a misconduct call on Selby. He's gone. Uh, very angry about that call. I didn't see what had happened that preceded that. But obviously very unhappy. And Aaron now shepherded by Jason Buckman, veteran of Peterborough Hockey. Okay, 7.15 remaining of the game. 5 1. Uh, and we've got just over seven minutes remaining. Receives 10 for illegal equipment and 10 personal misconduct. Face off. Both time at 51. No clear winner. Malice, uh, number 89 there. Yeah, Malasinski. It's great skill. International 
Phil, that shot that was just taken there was the second shot Swindon's had this period. So Phantoms have had about 13 shots to two now. That's clearly the story of this period when it comes to scoring. Yeah, interesting because I, I thought that the uh, Phantoms, sorry, I thought the Wildcats had taken the advantage over the Phantoms in the first period, but Peter had more shots, thought the Phantoms had shaded the second. Swindon had more shots, but in this period, quite clearly, there's only been one team who've provided a goal threat, James Rara punches the puck out of the zone and Swindon build again. Got a player on point. Puck out of the uh, the Phantom zone. Just what we want to see from Phantom's perspective. Swindon are going to want to be building. 6.23 remaining. Puck held up on the board. Swindon do well to clear. So Pliskowskis uh, G'd up by his goal perhaps. Uh, almost wins the puck on the blue line. On the blue line again for Dallas Pliskowskis with Gibson crashing the net. Shot from, Gib uh, from Pliskowskis, shielded, given away by the Swindon Wildcats. Rob Ferrara doing really well. Padalek, who for me, man of the match performance. Great pass to, uh, uh, to Dallas Pliskowskis, who's uh, one timer in the crease, saved well by Headley. Headley does well, stops the score going six to one. Phantoms pressure. Lloyd Gibson, same again, Padalek to Gibson. Terrific play, that's what you want to see from your wingers. Big change, line change, it's been a long shift. Booze in the crowd. Emotions riding high on the ice and in the crowd. Alice Yanis uh, Ozins uses his pads to take the puck. Over to Lee, over to Lee Elias, 5.15 remaining. Yeah, we're five minutes left here in the uh, third period here. You can see that the Swinning Wildcats are clearly frustrated, trying to spread the ice out, which is the right move to make right now. You have to be in desperation mode to try and get some chances. Here comes in the net, number 71, Eddie Bevers with another goal. Eddie Bevers drives to the front of the net and puts it around Headley for the sixth goal of the night. Five on one left in the third period, and Eddie Bevers with a beautiful play in front of the net to make the lead. Six to one for the Bears, and the Bears are taking complete control of this game. Bobby, what do you feel about what's going on right now? Oh, I think obviously the indiscipline and the, and the swimming team is there. It's still catching up on them. Uh, the two big 10 minute penalties that were taken by Matt Selby. There's no point in arguing with the referees and stuff and things like that. You just got to take it. If he's calling it, he's calling it. But you watch that beautiful play there by Eddie Beveris. He scored a beautiful goal, took his time, and he's, he's worked hard and deserved that tonight. Yeah, we can hear the frustration on the Swindon bench, a lot of uh, choice phrases coming out of their mouths, but you know that play by Beveris is the one we saw just a few minutes into the period when the net came off its moorings. It was almost like it was practice, but Beveris puts the puck in. Phantoms now a 6-1 to one lead under five minutes to play. Great hands from Beveris, great skating, driving the net, uh, rounds Headley to score that sixth goal. Phantoms dominant in front of goal. Nalasinski, whoa! I've said it already, but my, my car. Dear me, a shot tipped, I think probably, or safe from us into the plexi over the net. And uh, 4.34 remaining of this EPL fixture between teams that have been so easily evenly matched. 4.34 to go, 6 to 1. Nice to see Beveris get on the score sheet. He's not been firing the, the goals in as much as uh, the Phantoms would have quite liked. That'll do him. And Pascoe's just the same. He scored tonight. An absolute power of good. Puck behind the Phantoms goal. Four men there. Two of each. Two Phantoms. Two, two Wildcats. Good play from Malasinski, but it's stolen away. Snaffled away there by Connor Stokes. One of the young lads, part of the development squad. Stokes. Uh, Moore and Sisters on the ice, they're part of the development team. And a big hit on Connor Stokes from Jan Koskel. And really, if, if he's there, he's a young lad, he's got to play. But dear me, a big hit, it's a delay penalty. And oh, number 11 there, Scott Robson thought he'd scored. Oh, and Brad Moore's getting a club in the face. Officials have got a job to do. Tempers boiling over, well, tempers from the Wildcats boiling over. Bobby, tempers now. That's the thing, that's the tempers have turned up flying in there because of the scoreline at 6 1. Uh, Swindon's got to stay disciplined, you keep playing the game. You don't want to do them being in the penalty bench all night. So, they've got to keep working hard and just try to get a goal, chip away, see if they can get a goal. That's all they can do. 
So obviously with the development squad taking the ice there, it gives the top line a chance to have a breather and it's great experience for those boys. And that's going to be the Wildcats captain, Jan Kossel, sitting again. It's the, he's had a penalty already this evening. So we're going to go five on four hockey. And uh, what I like to see is, uh, is uh, a team go for it. You know, there's no need now. It's six to one. With the Phantoms aren't going to lose this game. I want them to see them put their foot on the gas. So Phantoms go on a PDQ power play. 3.50 remaining. Two of those minutes or less will be on the power play. Need a breather. Lee. Yeah, Phil, look. Let's take a look ahead now. The score is 6-1, to one, so we're going to look at next weekend. Both teams need to be smart now not to lose anybody. Next weekend, Sheffield, I'm sorry, Swindon takes on the Sheffield Steel Dogs and the Telford Tigers. So two big games there for Swindon they need to take points out of. And the Phantoms take on the Manchester Phoenix, which will be a rematch of last year's EPL playoff championship before playing Basingstoke next Sunday at home. We hope to be with you again next Sunday on the broadcast. But again, both these teams heading into major opponents next weekend have to be smart here in the final three minutes and 50 seconds. So Phantoms on the PDQ power play for two minutes, 3.50 left in the third. Phantoms lead by a score of six to one. So Kossel sits in the box. Phantoms in total control. And I have to say this result is a surprise. Puskowski on the blue line, great stuff. That's what we want to see, move them. Great Scott. Passes towards Bebris. Phantoms need to get set up again. Padalek behind the goal. Bit of a, a grab with a glove there, trying to grab the shirt of Padalek. Back out to Bebris. Bebris. Padalek. Bebris. Puskaus is on the blue line. I'm going to expect to see it again. I'm back wide. Craig Scott. Man in the crease. So, with 1 minute 17 of the PDQ power play remaining, with 3.06 remaining on the clock, a face-off um, in the new trice, Levers, Baranek, Ferrara forwards, Norton and Robson in defence, power play unit out there for the Phantoms. And on the clock. 2.55 remaining. Pass from Norton hits the back of uh, James Ryder's skate. Perhaps, or perhaps uh, yeah, James Ryder's skate. And Milan Baranek helps with Scott Robson to wind the clock down. 2.36 left, 46 uh, seconds of the power play remaining. Swindon's power play, uh, power penalty kill, doing a really good job here. Although, obviously, there's no urgency. Yanis Ozin's miles out of his crease. Miles out. He's trying to get in the game there. Oh, well, well, why not? Well, why not? Here we go. Baranek. Guy the goal. We've got uh, Tom Norton on a point. Oh, Levers in, uh, in the slot there. That's going to be a high stick. Wallace. Okay, 1.59 remaining. 10 seconds of the power play. It's uh, no, not good to score a goal, but it's wound the clock down. Yeah, one of the things I'm noticing, Phil, and Bobby, is a lot of the famous players calling for the puck. They're still incredibly hungry to get points on the board. Now, that's not an insult in any way to Swindon. It just shows the heart and the hunger of the fans. This is a breakout performance that this team drastically needed. They've done well, they've got points in every uh, game but one so far, but this is the, the scoring effort they needed this point of the season. Sisters to Stoke, Stokes get a, gets a stick on it, no icing. 44 down there with, um, so 44, uh, Lydiard, uh, penalty killed for the Swindon Wildcats, they'll be pleased that it hasn't got any worse. Costal, shot, Jason Buckman uh, felt that, absolutely felt it, and the Cats, Put pressure on the Phantoms goal with 1.33 remaining and really the puck had gone there but uh, number 26 Costal made sure that Will Weldon knew that he was still on the ice and there was a game to play. Phantoms clear their defensive zone. Ozins just needs to take a moment, no need to hurry from the Phantoms perspective. The game's not going to go the other way, just don't want to concede any more goals obviously.
Lidiard to Ryanen. Wildcats uh, sweep the puck across neutral ice. 54 seconds remaining in the game. Phantoms in complete control. Lloyd Gibson shovels it forward. A forlorn stick raised. They've given that as offside. Could have been a high stick, perhaps. Bobby, 45 seconds left. Dominant in front of goal, but perhaps the rest of the poor performance, not much in it. No, the, the, scores, the score obviously flatters Peter Brahe here because if you look at the score, it was 2-1 for a long part of this game with then a little bit of indiscipline and then bang, 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 couple of quick goals, game's over. And then it's just been one-way traffic since then, really. So it's, it's, it's worked out overall a good victory for Peter Brahe, but I thought Swindon for... But most of this game were competitive and in the game, but it's been a good game to watch. Now we also want to remind you all that the next Phantoms game is next Sunday, the next home game. Next Sunday, 5.30 p.m. against the Basingstoke Bison, right here at Planet Ice. Phil, let's finish this one up right now. Okay, Eddie Beveridge behind the uh, Swindon goal. 20 seconds remaining. Oh! Push, push, pushes a pass to Craig Scott, who's on the edge of the crease. Norton to Beveridge. Swindon out on their legs. Absolutely spent. They've battled hard, and it's really the finishing that the Phantoms, the chances created and finishing, that have seen this game uh, over. There's the final buzzer. Battled hard, and it's really the finishing that the Phantoms, the chances created and finishing, that have seen this game uh, over. There's the final buzzer.